Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we are going to learn about how to structure your Git repos. Within that, we are going to learn about mono versus multi repos and Git branching workflows as well. My name is Sushant Sutish, and I am your trainer for this AZ400 Azure DevOps Engineer Certification course. So, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. All right. So first, let's understand mono versus multi repos. A repository is simply a place where the history of your work is stored. It often lives in a .git subdirectory of your working copy. So what's the best way to organize your code repository? Software development teams start off with the best intention to keep clear separation of concerns in both the software being development and their code repositories. However, over time, it is not uncommon for the code repositories to be blotted with unrelated code and artifacts. There are two philosophies on how to organize your repos, mono repo or multi repo. Mono repos are a source control pattern where all the source code is kept in a single repository. This makes it super simple to give all of your employees access to everything in one shot. Just clone it down and done. Multi repos, on the other hand, refers to organizing your projects each into their own separate repositories. The fundamental difference between the mono repo and multi repo philosophies boils down to the differences about what will allow teams working together on a system to go fastest. The multi repo view in the extreme form is that if you let every sub team live in its own repo, they have the flexibility to work in their area however they want, using whatever libraries, tools, development workflow, etc. And this will maximize their productivity. The cost, obviously, is that anything not developed within a given repo has to be consumed as if it was a third party library or service. If you find a bug in a library you use, you have to fix in the appropriate repo and get a new artifacts published and, and then go back to your own repo to make the changes to your code. In the other repo, you have to deal with not only a different code base, but potentially with the different libraries and tools or even a different workflow. Or maybe you just have to ask someone who owns that system to make, to make the change for you and wait for them to get around it. Let's look into Git branching workflows. When evaluating a workflow for your team, it's most important that you consider your team's culture. You want the workflow to enhance the effectiveness of your team and not to be a burden that limits productivity. Some things to consider when evaluating Git workflow are, does this workflow scale with the team size? Or is it easy to undo mistakes and errors with this workflow? Does this workflow impose any new unnecessary cognitive overhead to the team? Most popular Git workflows will have some sort of centralized repo that individual developers will push and pull from. I will take you through some of the most popular Git workflows that, and then we will go into more detail in the next section. These extended workflows offer more specified patterns in regards to managing branches for feature development, hot fixes, and eventual release. Let's look into what is trunk based development. Trunk based development is a logical extension of centralized workflow. The core idea behind the feature branch workflow is that all feature development should take place in a dedicated branch instead of the master branch. This encapsulation makes it easy for multiple developers to work on a particular feature without disturbing the main code base. It also means the master branch should never contain broken code, which is a huge advantage for continuous integration environments. The Gitflow workflow was first published in the highly regarded 2010 blog post by Vincent Dearson. The Gitflow workflow defines a strict branching model designed around the project release. This workflow doesn't add any new concepts or commands beyond what's required for the feature branch workflow. 
Instead, it assigns very specific roles to different branches and defines how and when they should interact. The next one is forking workflow. The forking workflow is fundamentally different than the other workflows discussed in this tutorial. Instead of using a single server-side repository to act as a central code base, it gives every developer a server-side repository. This means that each contributor has not one, but two Git repositories, a private local one and a public server-side one. The core idea behind the feature branch workflow is that all feature development should take place in a dedicated branch instead of the master branch. Encapsulating feature development also makes it possible to leverage pull requests, which are a way to initiate discussions around a branch. They give other developers the opportunity to sign off on a feature before it gets integrated into the official project. Or if you get stuck in the middle of a feature, you can open a pull request asking for suggestions from your colleagues. The point is, pull requests make it incredibly easy for your team to comment on each other's work. In addition, feature branches can be pushed to the central repository. This makes it possible to share a feature with other developers without touching any official code. Since master is the only special branch storing several feature branches, on the central repository, which doesn't pose any problems. Of course, this is also a convenient way to back up everybody's local commits. So let us have a look into how this feature branch workflow is gonna look. First, let's understand how it is gonna work. The trunk-based deployment workflow assumes a central repository and the master represent the official project history. Instead of committing directly on their local master branch, Developers create a new branch every time they start work on a new feature and feature branches should have descriptive names. The idea is to give a clear, highly focused purpose to each branch and Git makes no technical distinction between the master branch and the feature branches. So developers can edit, stage and commit changes to a feature branch. So let's look into how you can create a branch. When you're working on a project, you're going to have a bunch of different features or ideas in progress at any given time, some of which are all ready to go and others which are not. Branching exists to help you manage this workflow. When you create a branch in your project, you are creating an environment where you can try out new ideas. Changes you make on a branch doesn't affect the master branch. So you are free to experiment and commit changes and save in the knowledge that your branch won't be merged until it's ready to be reviewed by someone you're collaborating with. Branching is a core concept in Git and the entire branch flow is based upon it. There is only one rule. Anything in the master branch is always deployable. Because of this, it's extremely important that your new branch is created off of master when working on a feature or a fix. Your branch name should be descriptive. For example, refactor authentication, user content cache key, make retina avatars, etc. So that others can see what is being worked on. Now let us look into how can you add commits. Once your branch has been created, it's time to start making changes. Whenever you add, edit or delete a file you are making a commit and adding them to your branch, this process of adding commits keeps track of your progress as you work on a feature branch. Commits also create a transparent history of your work that others can follow to understand what you have done and why. Each commit has an associated commit message, which is a description explaining why a particular change was made. Furthermore, each commit is considered a separate unit of change. This lets you roll back changes if a bug is found or if you decide to head in different direction. Commit messages are important, especially since Git tracks your changes and then displays them as commits once they are published to the server. By writing clear commit messages, you can make it easier for other people to follow along and provide feedback. 
Now let's look into how you can open a pull request. Pull requests initiate discussion about your commits because they are tightly integrated with the underlying Git repository. Anyone can see exactly what changes would be merged if they accept your request. You can open a pull request at any point during the deployment process. And pull requests are useful for contributing to project and for managing changes to shared repositories. If you are using fork and pull model, pull requests provide a way to notify project maintainers about the changes you like them to consider. If you are using a shared repository model, pull requests help start code review and conversation about proposed changes because they are merged into the master branch. Now let's look into discuss and review your code. Once a pull request has been opened, the person or team reviewing your changes may have questions or comments. You can also continue to push to your branch in light of discussion and feedback about your commits. If someone comments that you forgot to do something or if there is a bug in the code, you can fix it in your branch and push up the change. Git will show your new commits and any additional feedback you may receive in the unified pull request view. And pull request comments are written in Markdown so you can embed images, emojis, or use pre formatted text blocks and other lightweight formatting. Now let's look into how can you deploy. With Git, you can deploy from a branch for final testing in an environment before merging to master. Once your pull request has been reviewed and the branch passes your test, you can deploy your changes to verify them. And if your branches cause issues, you can roll it back by deploying the existing master. How can you merge? Now that your changes has been verified, it is time to merge your code into the master branch. Once merged, pull requests preserve a record of the historical changes to your code because they are searchable. They let everyone go back in time to understand why and how a decision was made. By incorporating keywords into the text of your pull request, you can associate issues with code. When your pull request is merged, the related issues can also be closed. Alright, so that concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we are going to learn about Git flow branch workflow. So I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.